morning, sir. Uh, I don't think anybody needs to understand who John Herbst is, one of the most prominent uh, American diplomats, a former ambassador here in Kiev in Ukraine for many years, and a very, very prominent person in the history of American diplomacy, and very active still. <laughs> uh, just like we spoke last night, uh, we basically want to raise uh, two questions. Number one is so-called illegal presence of uh, Russian Federation at the UN. And the second, the second question would be on what would be your suggestions on correcting the situation, because the momentum is there. Biden administration has just announced that the uh, Security Council does need a lot of uh, changes, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the first question would be, do you agree that there is no legal ground for Russia's presence in the UN since 1991? All right, look, um, first the thing I need to say is that I'm not a lawyer, not an international lawyer. Uh, so I can't get into the legal niceties of this question. Second observation, uh, maybe this is why I'm not a lawyer, um, law follows practice, and uh, law is uh, are things that are agreed, um, at least international law, among different nations, uh, based upon practice, including relative power relationships. That's a very abstract phrase. Well, what that means is the real world determines what law is. And sadly, the real law world is often determined, elements of the international system are often determined by the powerful. <laughs> and there's no question that Moscow's behavior since 2014, and actually you could say since 2008 with this war in Georgia, but since 2014, when it seized and quote unquote annexed Crimea, has been illegal according to the UN Charter, according to international law. Now that while that is true, there are not influential voices in the UN community, in the international community, calling on Russia to be kicked out of the UN. But that's what we're trying to change. No, no, no I, just, I, I understand. <laughs> I guess what, what that means for me is, I think it's useful to have people pointing this out, because pointing this out, in fact, undermines Moscow's international position and its ability to wage war. I'm just a bit skeptical about the possibility of turning um, such observations into a movement which would effectively remove Russia from the UN. Well, but your skepticism obviously is based on, on practice, right? However, if we uh, sort of explore all legal options, right. And you know, go to I ICJ. ICJ would issue a non-binding decision, but that would uh, obviously have some impact on many, many members of the unit of the community of nations, right? I agree with you that this is a worthy objective, <laughs> and I'm delighted that you and others are willing to pursue it. Oh. And it would add to the pressure on Moscow to reconsider its war of aggression against Ukraine. And that would be a wonderful thing. It would also make it harder for people to stand on the sidelines and say, well, you know, it's this war between, not really the, the Russians and the Ukrainians, it's really between the Russians and the US, and Ukraine is just sort of the proxy, which is complete nonsense. But it would make it harder for them to say that. And that would be a good thing. And again, all of this would increase pressure on Moscow to stop this war of war crimes. Well, I guess Moscow doesn't really <laughs> hear any, anybody, now, but uh, they do consider the reason we're raising this as, as a uh, group of Ukrainian deeds and civic leaders, civil society leaders, is because according to whatever we may say of Mr. Medvedev, right? Like he's a former president of the very head of the Russian Security Council, and he definitely named three main pillars of Russia, one of them is the seat of the Security Council. So if we can gather sort of momentum, and if we can sort of raise awareness in the world, 
it's not really, it was not done properly in 1991. And then plus all of the situation that we have now, this will definitely undermine Russia's ability to do anything on the international uh, arena. And uh, I do hope that, and this is something I want to ask you about, uh, I do hope that uh, going into this direction, if we sort of join effort from the governments of different countries, Ukraine's allies, from civil society, this will definitely convince some of the people, some of the countries that are now on kind of Russia's side to reconsider their position, don't you think so? We, 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 we agree with that completely. Oh, uh, exploring the basis for Russia's participation in the UN, uh, making clear the, act, the nature of Moscow's war in Ukraine, its inherent contradiction of Moscow's obligations under the UN Charter is a very good thing. Uh, were it possible to shake uh, the conviction that Moscow deserves not just a place in the UN, but to be a member of the Security Council, that would be wonderful. I don't know if that's doable, but what is doable is, again, highlighting through the UN Convention, international law, egregious Russian behavior to shake off some of the support for Moscow internationally. That's a very good thing. Wonderful. And uh, I guess last question would be, uh, it's obvious that the system of interna international security systems, it, the, the entire construct that was built after the Second World War is collapsing because in, in fact, I mean collapsing maybe is a strong word, but uh, you know, it's not functional because we have a member of UN Security Council waging war and the uh, UN can do little about it. Well, I in part agree with you. Uh, the international security order is under challenge, a large challenge. Uh, I wouldn't say it's, it has collapsed or is collapsing though, because I think we are seeing a pushback against that challenge. Uh, Moscow is not winning this war on Ukraine, and it's not winning it not just because the Ukrainians are fighting bravely and smartly for their existence as a nation, but because there is sub substantial, if not sufficient, support coming from the United States, NATO, the EU, and other prominent members of the international. So in a sense, they are trying to restore that order that you just described. And this is not a unique circumstance. I mean, it's unique for Ukraine, or sad for Ukraine. But what, you know, within years of the establishment of the UN, hundreds of thousands of Chinese, well first North Korea invaded South Korea, mm -hmm. and then later mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands of Chinese joined that fight. Yeah. Uh, and while China was not then a member of the UN, uh, communist China, uh, they were backed strongly and within the UN system by a permanent member of the Security Council meeting with the Soviet Union. Uh, we pushed back against successfully that challenge the international order. I think we are in the process of pushing back now against this challenge, the international But we haven't got there yet. Yeah, no. Basically, the logic of what, what I was saying when I was using sort of... Intentionally, I used a strong, a strong word, collapsing, is because, uh, yes, Ukraine and every decent person on Earth does appreciate a lot the help of the United States, European Union, NATO, so on and so forth. However, I was talking particularly about the UN challenge and uh, interestingly that you've raised something that I was just about to ask. Do you think the uh, possibility of Korean scenario is possible? If you, you know. No, it, well, you mean the UN dispatching troops? That yeah. No, that's, that's not no. gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Oh, uh, and you would have at least two permanent members of the National Security Council yeah, working yeah, against yeah. it. <laughs> Uh, but I am certain, just I'm confident slash certain, that there will be increased 
a military aid to Ukraine. Not as quickly as I would like it, but it's going to be, there's going to be more, more advanced weapons. And I think it's, I, I think there's almost no question that Ukraine is going to win because the support's not going to get, it's only going to get greater. Absolutely. And Ukraine is fighting, again, very smartly and bravely for its life, and it will win. But just to go out, a little bit out of the way, if there were truly a danger of Ukraine um, starting to lose, I would not rule out a more direct intervention from the West. I'm not predicting it, but I would not rule it out. Well, it's very unlikely at the moment that it will happen because, just like you right. mentioned, Ukraine uh, is being supplied more and more sophisticated <laughs> we weapons, ones, while Russia is kind of stuck. depleting. That's correct. Depleting and, uh, you Be know, begging for arms resorting, from yeah, yeah, resorting to like arms from 1960s. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's not likely to happen but uh, do you think uh, there is there is an opinion here in Ukraine that, that this war will make a very significant changes into the way after Ukraine is successful it will make very significant changes in the entire architecture of international security what would well you say? Ukraine's victory in this war reaffirms that the security architecture of Europe remains intact, and that by itself is extremely important. But it's also true that um, American foreign policy has not been successful by and large for the last 22 years. And American prestige has suffered. American power has suffered. Now, I'm pointing that out not just because I'm an American, but because I believe that the uh, security and even the prosperity of the entire globe is undergirded by American power, properly used, as it was properly used from 1945 up until these misadventures in Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, and Libya. So our prestige has taken a hit. If you went back eight months ago, and saw what was being written in uh, influential media, in especially in the West, but not just the West. It was full of the notion that the great authoritarian powers were rising, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that democracy was retreating, that the West was retreating, that the United States was retreating. And you know, you had the famous Putin Xi meeting mm -hmm. in early February before Moscow launched this major invasion. And the talk was sort of like, this is the emerging power globally. <laughs> well, it doesn't look like that right now, no, does it? not anymore. <laughs> right? The junior partner of that great emerging bloc is failing in Ukraine. Yep. And you can be sure that she, as he watches the war in Ukraine, and as he watches 20 and 30 year old American technology. That's what HIMARS are. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Destroying the Russian conventional military is wondering what would modern American technology do to Chinese amphibious landing on Taiwan? <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Ambassador, last uh, sort of question and request. Uh, uh, this group of uh, civil society leaders in Ukraine, we are uh, distributing the petition uh, kick Russia out of the U.S. Right. So, would you agree to put it on your social media? Uh, I'm happy. I am not a great social media person. I'm a dinosaur. Mm -hmm. But I do something I'm happy to send. Okay. So, um, you have my coordinates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send I'll, me the information. I'll, I'll, send, I'll send you the link <laughs> to the petition. and yeah, I, will, I will give you a shout out. Absolutely. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. One question. It is important that in any law everybody should follow the same rules. In legality of Russian presence there is neither no such precedence, nor correspondence to the UN Charter. It is obvious that if one country uses different rules than the others, it makes the United Nations structure inefficient. There's no question that Moscow's behavior with this war is illegal by international standards, by the UN Charter. It's immoral. And of course, you have no international order 
if rogue powers can flout law, can flout morality, and pay no consequences. So your, your logic is absolutely right. Yeah, but uh, uh, we Don't you think that it all started in 1991, when the international community allowed Russia to ignore the UN Charter? So Russia went ahead, Georgia, Ukraine. When, when you say that the international community allowed Russia to break the Charter of the UN in 1991, what exactly are you referring to? No, we're, we're referring to the fact that rather than, you see, Soviet Union was the okay, okay, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what one, one, one question. Uh, 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 Ambassador Avarantsov uh, said in his interview, Ambassador Vorontsov has said in his interview that they wanted to act according to the UN Charter procedure, but some American friends with known names had advised them to ignore the Charter, using the USSR chairmanship at the Security Council in December 1991, and simply change the name and make up the story about the successor state. I frankly don't think this is very important in connection with Kremlin aggression whether that Kremlin aggression was in Georgia in 2008 or in Ukraine today. And if uh, the Russia that existed at that time was the Russia that existed today, uh, you probably would not be pursuing this initiative. In other words, there were serious flaws in Yeltsin's Russia, but they were not uh, a revisionist power. They were not conducting major wars of aggression. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem we're, we're discussing today is really a problem relating to the aggressive foreign policy of the Kremlin under Putin over the past 15 or so years. Uh, what the United States did back in 1991 reflected the view at the time, which was is obviously not correct today, that Russia could and would be a partner for the United States, for Europe, and so on. Uh, but it's not that Russia thought, well, we got away with not applying by UN procedures to become a member, therefore we're going to invade Georgia. These are two completely separate things. But the fact that the UN process and UN procedures were not observed in 1991 is a vulnerability for Moscow, which is completely appropriate to explore this. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for your time. Thank you. And thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you.